Good evening to those of you who are in Japan and good morning to those of you who are connecting from Europe. I'm Yuri Tarekomaya, country representative uh, for Europe South Japan and a very warm welcome to you. This is our MSc in Staff Exchanges Research and Innovation Projects with Europe webinar. I would like to especially uh, welcome Marlene Barthes, who is a policy officer at the European Commission the uh, Director General for Education, Youth, Sport and Culture. Uh, she joined the European Commission in 2013, where she worked for the unit responsible for international cooperation and programs in the field of education and training. And since 2020, she's part of the team in exchange of the MSCA uh, actions and uh, the EU's reference program for doctor education and program uh, postdoctoral training. So uh, welcome, Marlene, to the webinar. Um, I could say a few words about the MSCA staff exchanges, something general, but I presume that you will be giving a much more extensive uh, explanation to the audience. So let's just uh, start with your presentation then. Okay, <laughs> as you wish. Um, indeed, I'll focus on the MSCA staff exchanges today. So hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, and I'll just quickly share my slides so that you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yes, hello. I mean, uh, good good afternoon uh, or good morning, depending where where in the world you are currently uh, located. I'm I'm in Brussels, so hello from uh, Belgium, uh, where it is 10 a.m. Uh, right now. I work for the European Commission, uh, indeed, so for the EU, and we are in charge of the so-called uh, Marie Sklodowska Curie actions or MSCA. Um, so you will see that in the EU, we love to to use acronyms uh, and abbreviations for our complicated uh, names and initiatives. So today, when I refer to the MSCA uh, or you know, when I use other acronyms, don't be uh, surprised. Um, so just to maybe set uh, the, the frame uh, of, of, I mean, you, some of you are probably familiar with this, so apologies if, if uh, I repeat information you already have, uh, but in case you're newcomers, uh, this is just to uh, give a little bit the context of, of the program we are working with. So the, the overall framework program, as we call it, is Horizon Europe, uh, which is a seven year program running from 2021 to 2027. Um, so it's an EU's framework program for research and innovation. Uh, and it, is, uh, it has a total budget of, of 95.5 billion euros. Um, sorry, I don't know the conversion in yen, uh, but it's a lot. I think it's in the world, it's probably the largest research and innovation funding uh, program uh, worldwide. And you can see that it has a, a pillar structure. So we have three pillars within Horizon Europe, but today we will focus only uh, on, on parts of the first pillar. So the excellent science pillar where the Marie Sklodowska Curie actions or the MSCA are uh, located. Um, so today we'll focus on that, but uh, it could be that you're also interested or even already involved in other uh, projects, uh, other parts of the Horizon Europe um, uh, program. So for instance, also the European Research Council could be interesting for you. I'm not going to talk about it today, but don't hesitate to you know, go uh, on, on Yahoo or Google and, and just look for more information in case you're interested in, in other parts. So you see that the budget is quite big for the MSCA, so the Marie Sklodowska Curie actions. The budget is uh, about 6.6 .6 billion euros, so it's, uh, it's quite substantive. Um, and it's also over seven years. Huh? So, so this uh, is for the whole duration of our uh, framework program. Now, if we look a little bit more specifically at the MSCA, um, and you might have heard this in, in other presentations uh, for other actions, but basically uh, what we do fund uh, or what we're trying to, to do is to help um, researchers uh, to, to develop new skills and competencies and advance their uh, careers. So we do fund researchers at all career uh, stages. So this could be from uh, PhD uh, candidates. 
um, to more experienced uh, postdoctoral research, for instance. So we really cover the whole um, spectrum. Um, as I said, with the excellent science pillar, and we are uh, bottom up. So we are a so-called bottom-up uh, program. This is important. So it means that it's really the projects or the researchers from the bottom, from the ground, who decide uh, what topic they want to cooperate on. So it can be any uh, discipline, any scientific discipline. Uh, so it's not us in the EU deciding that it should be on you know, only physics or uh, life sciences, etc. It's really open to, to any discipline. What's very important as well is that uh, the MSCA, uh, all actions, but especially uh, the stuff exchange one, is uh, very international. It's actually the most international part uh, of the Horizon Europe, previously Horizon 2020 uh, program. Yeah, so also participation from non-EU countries, uh, including obviously Japan, and Japan is doing quite, quite well in the MSCA, uh, but also uh, researchers from all around the world. So we have over 100 plus nationalities represented in uh, our projects. Uh, another important thing is that it's cross-sectoral. Huh? So across sectors, what we mean by sectors is academic sector and non-academic sector but I'll get back to this a little bit later on. And then also interdisciplinary. So I said we're bottom up. So any discipline, any scientific discipline uh, can participate or is represented. Uh, but what we're trying to encourage is really cooperation across uh, different uh, disciplines. Um, for those of you who already participate in the program, you know that uh, that it's quite uh, a generous uh, program. It's, uh, it has very attractive working conditions uh, for for the staff uh, that participates or the researchers that participate. Um, it also has a strong impact on the organizations, obviously, that participate uh, as they set up new networks or they expand existing uh, networks. Uh, and we have a strong involvement of industry and and uh, enterprises. So the business sector, uh, including SMEs, is strongly represented in the um, La, uh, Marie Curie uh, actions. These are just some figures to give you an idea of, of what we funded in the previous um, generation of, uh, of, of programs. So the seven years uh, program before Horizon Europe under Horizon 2020. So there, uh, over seven years, the MSCA have funded over 65,000 researchers. Uh, including 25,000 PhD candidates. Um, more or less 37% uh, of these researchers are from outside the EU. Uh, so that's quite a big share of non-EU researchers. Um, we funded around 1,000 doctoral programs. Uh, more than 4,000 companies uh, uh, participated in our projects. And you can see that we also have a big focus on, on gender equality uh, and with 42% of uh, female researchers supported. And normally uh, this should even increase in the coming years. Um, you might know uh, that the MSCA have five actions, five main actions. So today we'll be on staff exchanges, but uh, I mean, in case you're interested, obviously you can also have a look at the other uh, actions. So for doctoral networks, uh, as the name says, it used to be called innovative training networks. Now it's doctoral networks. So that's for the setup of, of doctoral programs um, in and outside academia. And then you recruit basically PhD uh, candidates. Postdoctoral fellowships, this one is a little bit different because we fund one postdoctoral researcher. Huh? So a researcher that who already has a, a PhD. Staff exchanges that we're going to talk about today. So the exchange of, of staff. It used to be called uh, research and innovation staff exchanges, RISE. Uh, so you might be familiar with the RISE acronym rather than staff exchanges. And then we also have co-fund, so that's co-funding. Uh, the EU contributes partly to set up doctoral and postdoctoral programs. And then the last one here on this slide, MSCA and citizens. Um, that's more our public outreach uh, events and, and you know, uh, citizens engagement events. Um, some of you might have participated in, in or seen or heard about the, the researchers night, which actually just took place, I think, a week or a couple of weeks uh, ago, so at the end of September. 
Um, Japanese participation in the MSCA, so this is important, uh, depending which action you want to participate in, uh, you have to distinguish, so you have to make the difference between if you are an individual researcher or if you are a Japanese organization that wants to participate in uh, the MSCA. So it's important because the rules change or the eligibility uh, rules are different. So if you are a Japanese individual, a researcher, for instance, who wants to participate or be recruited in a doctoral network or apply for a postdoctoral fellowship, um, that's completely possible. So we don't have any restrictions on nationality. Huh? So you could apply just as anybody else uh, within Europe or uh, outside. And then depending what you apply to, you would probably come to Europe to be hosted uh, in an EU member state or associated country. Now, if you are a Japanese organization, you can participate in, in all our actions, but careful, it is without automatic uh, EU funding. Uh, I'll come back to it a little bit later, uh, but basically Japan is considered as an industrialized uh, country. So uh, the, 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 if you participate in an MSCA project, you would be um, considered a, an associated partner meaning that you can participate. You do not sign the grant agreement, uh, so that, that would be done by the European uh, part uh, of, of the project participants, but still you contribute to the project activity. So you're an active partner in the project. So for example, you can host European uh, researchers. Obviously, you can also send your own researchers to Europe, but these would then have to be covered um, by your own uh, funds. Uh, but don't worry, I'll come back to that uh, a little bit later. So, but it's important for you to know that if you send your researchers, um, usually you would cover them with your own costs, so be it your institutional costs. It could be costs from uh, the Japanese government. So, for instance, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, uh, Science and Technology, MEXT, uh, uh, Mombu Kagakusho, um, uh, could contribute, for instance, also through um, the GSPS, so the Japan. And, uh, Society for Promotion of Science, and I'll get back to that in, in a minute. Um, if you are a Japanese organization, it doesn't matter if you're an academic or non-academic uh, organization. As I said, we're very open to participation from the non-academic sector, so it could be industry, uh, businesses, uh, NGOs, um, etc. So uh, this, I mean, means that you can also participate and um, for instance, exchange host uh, researchers. The next staff exchange call, or actually the current staff exchange call, because it is just open, and this is why we're having the event today. So it opened on the 6th of October. Uh, the closing date is next year, uh, beginning of March. So you have uh, a few months to find partners if you don't have uh, some already, or uh, if you already know people you cooperate with, to talk to them and see if they want to apply uh, with you together. The total budget is uh, 77.5 million euros. Obviously, that's for the whole of uh, the whole call. Uh, I would say one project, one individual project, I think the maximum amount per project would be 1.6 million uh, euros. Huh? So that's the more or less the maximum amount of a project. Obviously, the size of the project uh, varies, so it can be different. Sometimes they're uh, less uh, than 1.6. Uh, million and actually also good for you to know is that every year the budget increases the overall budget of the call increases so more and more uh, projects can be funded so until 2027 we will see a nice little um, increase in in the budget where you can find all the information and apply. So this is for MSCA staff exchanges, but actually any uh, call published under Horizon Europe, or if you might be interested, also Erasmus Plus, uh, you might be familiar with the Erasmus Plus uh, program. So all the calls and all the information are centralized on the funding and tender opportunities portal, FTOP. 
P. Um, you can, I mean, the slides, sorry, I should have said that at the beginning, I will share my slides um, with the organizers so you will receive them so that you have all the links. But otherwise, if you're taking notes, you can just type FTOP, Funding and Tender Opportunities Portal on Google. And then once you're on the site, you will see, um, you know, a little search bar. So you can type MSCA Staff Exchanges 2022, all the documents have been published, so please go through them, read the work program, there's a guide for applicants, um, the model grant agreement, uh, FAQ, so frequently asked questions, uh, which uh, are a bit difficult to navigate, but there's a lot of information in there. Also good to you, for you to know is that if you don't have partners yet, you can search for partners on uh, the, the funding and tenant opportunities portal, huh? so this partner search tool, and then you can uh, apply uh, together. So don't hesitate to have a look uh, there. This is just an example of uh, last year. So actually under Horizon Europe, the very first uh, call of staff exchanges, so the 2021 staff exchanges call, to give you a bit an idea of how many proposals we received and how many we will fund. So we received over 200 uh, applications um, in total. And out of these, more or less 77 projects are selected for funding. So we're still uh, going through the reserve list. Could be that, uh, you know, that be a couple more. But you can see that actually the success rate is very, very high. So within the Marie Sklodowska Curie actions, actually, staff exchanges is the action with the highest success rate. So the highest likelihood for you to get selected for funding. Um, I think if you compare to the year before, so in 2020, we received around 400 applications, so nearly double. So we have a real decrease uh, this year, uh, which is mainly uh, due to this being a new program. So Horizon Europe, as you saw, it just started in 2021. So staff exchanges, this was the first call under Horizon Europe. And actually, every new framework program, so every seven year, we see that there is a decrease in the number of uh, applications. As you know, uh, we had also the COVID uh, crisis. So obviously, when you're talking about exchange, physical exchange of stuff, probably this had an impact as well. And then, uh, you know, we also have a lot of uncertainties linked, for instance, to Brexit um, and the status of the UK in, in our program. Now, if we look more at Japan, we had nine success, successful projects with Japanese uh, partners. So, uh, for example, we have Okayama University, Doshisha University, Nagoya University, Todai, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, who were successful. And uh, here you have the, the names of the projects uh, involving these uh, Japanese partners. Um, later on, uh, the other uh, speaker today, actually, uh, Professor Chenevier, uh, who represents Okayama University, I think they were were successful in the HESPRI uh, project, so number seven here. And um, once these projects have signed the grant agreement, they will be published online. So you can access all the projects that are funded under the MSCA or Horizon Europe, for that matter, um, under uh, on this uh, CORDIS um, website. So I added the link here, so don't hesitate to you know, go on Cordis, you can type MSCA Japan, and then you will see all the projects that have been funded uh, in the past or currently funded involving, uh, for example, Japanese partners. So if you're interested to know a little bit uh, more. Uh, as I said, uh, Japanese organizations or Japan uh, is not, it's a country not automatically eligible for EU funding. Uh, so if you receive a European researcher, he will be completely funded by us. But if you send a Japanese researcher, normally you should still pay his costs. However, now as of 2021, so the last call, together with MEXT, uh, so with your ministry and, and GSPS, uh, we are trying to cooperate more. Uh, and this here on this slide, actually, this message that you see, this is the message that the ministry has asked us to send to successful uh, Japanese uh, partners in, in staff exchange projects. So explaining that you, you, if you have been successful, you could try to get additional funding, so top up 
funding through two Japanese um, projects. So you might know them probably the bilateral research project and the core to core program. Now, careful, it is not because you have received uh, funding under staff exchanges that you will automatically receive, um, it's not because you have been selected under staff exchanges, sorry, that you will automatically receive this uh, MEXT or GSPS funding, but there is a big chance uh, that, that you could. Um, so to be kept in mind, if you want to apply uh, also now in this call that next year, um, you know, you could also ask for additional funding from your own government. Um, so I would encourage you to keep an eye on, on these two uh, programs. Now, I've been talking a lot <laughs> and I haven't really explained yet what staff exchanges it. So what is MSCA staff uh, exchanges? Although the name I think is quite uh, obvious. So it's exchange is a mobility of staff. I said it's international. Okay, so worldwide, intersectoral, so academic, non-academic and interdisciplinary. Yeah? So between different disciplines and the main objective of staff exchanges is to send, second uh, staff, uh, research and innovation staff. So your staff will be going around uh, to your partners and, and to you. The purpose of this uh, mobility or exchange obviously is to exchange, transfer knowledge uh, between the different organizations that participate in, in this uh, consortium. Um, and to create links uh, between sectors, so between the academic and the non-academic sectors, and obviously at a, you know, a worldwide global scale to strengthen uh, the human capital uh, development, so to equip staff with new skills and new competences. Um, so here you just have a little bit of a summary of the main uh, added value uh, for either the staff or the organization. So if we look at the staff, um, you know, he or she should get new transferable skills and competences. So these are skills that you can take from one place to the other. Huh? So working in teams, uh, leadership, uh, problem solving, communication, etc. This should help him or her to, uh, you know, increase his employability and career prospects uh, also help uh, turn innovative ideas uh, into products, um, processes and services. Huh? So really uh, bringing uh, ideas to the market. Um, a strong international exposure. So as I said, the MSCA and especially staff exchanges has a big participation of non-European countries. Huh? So, so there's a strong international focus uh, and then obviously for the staff it will be a lot of networking it will be you know increased uh, uh, communication capacities and then for the organizations it's actually very similar uh, so as i said there will be a transfer of knowledge between sectors and disciplines uh, you will participate in bigger stronger uh, networks huh? so i think you will you will be able to if you have already a network to to deepen it or to expand it to make it bigger um, and obviously also to increase your own uh, research and innovation capacity because you will be receiving uh, highly qualified staff from uh, your uh, partners to work uh, at your institution. Eligible participants, so this is a little bit more the, the rules. Uh, as I said, you can be academic or non-academic. Now, the minimum uh, to set up a project the minimum consortium size is that you need three entities, three organizations in three different countries, okay? And out of these three countries, two uh, have to be uh, an EU member state or Horizon Europe associated country. And then on top of that minimum three, you can have any organization from any country in the world, including uh, Japan. Um, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, you have to be careful with the country rules. So we have different, let's say, categories of countries, EU member states, uh, obviously, so the 27. We have Horizon Europe associated countries. So this is evolving. Uh, so you would have to check to make sure which countries are now currently associated. I think we have 16 uh, of them. So I don't know, for instance, Turkey is not an EU member state, but they pay 
what we call an entry ticket. Uh, so they participate in Horizon Europe the same way as France or Germany because they paid money to do so and they signed an agreement with the EU. Careful, the UK is still uh, in a transitional uh, period. Um, so you have to be careful here because they are not yet associated country. And then we have what we call the third countries, okay, um, which Japan falls into. So we have those third countries that are eligible for funding, that's uh, developing countries, for example, I don't know, Central Asia, um, etc. And then we have third countries, as I said earlier, not eligible for funding, at least not automatically eligible for funding. And that's Japan, uh, because you are an industrialized country. So it's also Korea, for instance, the United States, uh, Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, etc. Okay, so uh, you belong to that category. As I said, you can participate, but you have to also bring in some uh, of your own funds. For the stuff, um, so as I said, it's the exchange of stuff. Um, the good thing is that for stuff exchanges, uh, any type of stuff can participate. So it can be a researcher. It can also be administrative stuff. It could be managerial stuff or even technical uh, stuff. If you are a researcher, it can be PhD candidate, it can be a postdoctoral researcher, so any career stage. The minimum condition is that you have been engaged in innovation or research activities for at least one month before going on the mobility, yeah? so before leaving uh, your institution. Um, the maximum one staff can go abroad is 12 months, okay? So the duration is between one month to 12 months. It doesn't have to be 12 months in one go. Huh? So you could go three months, come back, and then go two months, come back, go again three months. So it can be split into several stays. Another condition is that if you go on a staff exchange uh, secondment or mobility, you have to be devoted full time to the action. OK, so while you are abroad at your partner, you have to work full time on the Marie Curie staff exchange project. And another condition is that when you finish your mobility period, so after your six months, you have to come back to your uh, sending institution uh, to make sure that the knowledge that you gained uh, at, the, at your partner, that you bring it back home to your sending institution. So here's just a, a summary. So for staff exchanges, so that you see it in, 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 in total. So the project duration, one project uh, is four years. Uh, okay, uh, in total. Um, the composition, as I said, is a minimum three organizations from three countries. Uh, and then on top of that, you can have any uh, other organization from any other country, including Japan. The secondment, so the exchanges, is one minimum one month, maximum 12 months per person, per staff. Um, important to say that the staff is remains employed at the sending institution. So if you're sending your staff, he has a contract, a working contract with your institution, not with your uh, partner. So he remains your employee, meaning that you also have to pay his salary. Uh, so this is very important. And then the budget, as I said, the European staff coming to you, to Japan, will be completely covered, paid for, by the project and then the Japanese staff going abroad should be paid for by you or as I explained, maybe GSPS or other mixed um, funding. Um, this is if you are interested in applying. Uh, so if you're interested in this action, uh, obviously uh, there are evaluation criteria to select the best projects. Uh, you see that we have three based on excellence, impact, and implementation. So you have to very carefully uh, read this and make sure uh, together with your uh, consortium partners that you address each and every one of these. You can see that the weighting, so the points given to the different um, criteria is different. So really focus on excellent 50% of, of, the, uh, of the evaluation criteria. And in total, if you want to be selected for funding, you have to have 70% or above.
Uh, so, so make sure that you really uh, address all of these uh, criteria. This is just uh, an example of a project involving a Japanese uh, a partner. So Kokuritsu Daigaku um, is involved in this Saib Speed project. It's a closed project. It just ended in July this year. On the left side, you have a little bit an overview. So it was from 2017 to 2022. Uh, the total EU budget was 1 million, over 1 million, uh, nearly 1.3 million euros. The coordinator was in Spain. Um, the description it was linking education and actually robotics, uh, so artificial intelligence. It has published a lot of peer-reviewed articles, organized a lot of conferences, uh, written book chapters, and also uh, softwares, so developed uh, 15 uh, softwares. You have at the bottom here the link again to Cordis, that's the platform I mentioned earlier. So actually, if you're interested uh, to see also all the outcomes, uh, you know, the conferences, the book chapters, etc. Everything is published on the Cordis uh, website. And yeah, and then the composition, for example, who participated is also on Cordis. So you can see we had seven beneficiaries uh, from Europe. Huh? So France, Greece, Bulgaria and Spain. And then we had three international partners. So we had Japan, Chile and Morocco. So it's just to give you an example, but then Mr. Uh, Professor Chenevier uh, right now, I mean, after me, will give you another uh, or speak about his, his uh, projects involving Japan. And this is uh, my last uh, slide, um, just so that you know uh, that um, for all our projects that we fund now, we're trying to be more uh, environmentally uh, aware. Uh, so we have published what we call the MSCA uh, Green Charter. So all our project participants, uh, uh, be they organizations or individuals, are encouraged to follow uh, this green charter. So it's kind of a sustainability charter. You will see it's quite short. It has a few guiding principles, um, um, such as uh, you know, using um, teleconferencing tools when travel is not necessary, uh, strictly necessary, or to have more low carbon forms of transportation, to recycle, use renewable energies, et cetera, et cetera. So, so really to make Make your projects more green, uh, have less environmental impact. So uh, if you're interested in participating in the MSCA, I would also encourage you to have a look um, at this uh, green charter. And I think with this, I finish. Um, I will be here still uh, for a little bit if you have questions. Uh, but for now, I'll hand over uh, to the colleagues. Thank you so much, Marlene. And uh, I would like to encourage our participants, attendees, to please uh, submit your questions in the Q&A box. Um, Marlene will answer your queries at the end of the webinar. And uh, now we are to our next uh, speaker. As uh, Marlene mentioned, our next speaker is um, Bernard Chenevier, and he has extensive experience in the MSC staff exchanges. Uh, Professor Chenevier has been a CNRS researcher for 30 years and he's a director of research. He's been a director of research for 15 years. His field is structural physics, material sciences. He's been on leave from CNRS and based at Okayama University since 2014 and engaged extensively in MSC and staff exchange between Japan and several European countries. Uh, unfortunately, he could not be with us in person, so we actually have a recording that we are going to uh, share with you at this point. So I'd like to ask my colleague to please uh, play the video. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome at the Staff Exchange webinar. I am Bernard Chenevier from CNRS, Senior Scientist at CNRS in France and on leave at Okayama University, where I have been uh, working for, from uh, April 2014. At Okayama University, I am in charge of improving the international profile 
and contribute to fight the Japanese university's decline. I'm, I am basically focused on research, trying to develop high yield programs, bringing lots of international mobilities that is excellent for the globalization of the university. For the research, I found and I use very simple logistic program to participate. I have two driving forces, uh, including a holistic approach. The direct forces are based on research for global, large-scale, international and prestigious consortium with EU partners and others, as well as higher education, where I'm trying to, be as, to transform the university and make it as global as possible by inviting international students master, PhD research for master, master and PhD research partnership. Okayama University is a comprehensive university, about 13,000 students, 700 faculty members. Okayama University and its research institutes are most renowned in high energy physics, cosmology and neutrino physics, solid state physics, superconductivity and related engineering technologies, chemistry, including catalysis and other, as, and other inorganic and organic uh, features, plant studies focused on genetic engineering, as well as medical. The medical sector is very strong. The University Hospital is a reference in Chugoku, southwest of Japan. Appli applying my strategy to Horizon Europe, rely on strong basic and applied research focused on any field of science with connection with Europe, top research centers like CNRS and Horizon Europe uh, teams. The strategy is based on 3I approach. 3I is recommended by the EU Commission when uh, drafting a uh, staff exchange proposal. International, interdisciplinary, intersectorial, academic or non-academic, as well as gender balanced. At Okayama University, we have now three big projects running. One is BRKO and the Kofun history in Japan and archaeology in the field of uh, staff exchange program. A second program running is CMB Inflate, focused on cosmology and ultra early stages of the universe. A third one has been accepted by the European Commission very recently. This is HESPRI for improving public policies for higher education. But we have still a portfolio of other projects in preparation with submission deadline in uh, early next year. One is for AI for laser technologies, geosciences with strong AI uh, uh, features and so on. But let me uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the success stories. And I start with one of the, uh, uh, with one I have uh, already uh, quoted, BRKO, Beyond Archaeology. Beyond, uh, BRKO uh, rely on modern science approaches to review an old history period of Japan, the Kofun, that covers third, from the third to early seventh century AD, following the Yayoi period. The Kofun is a mound edited, eri, uh, erected for a um, landlord. You have a a strong, uh, uh, I would say, a design of a big. The duration of Project BRTO is about four years. The budget is a little bit less than one million. And in terms of impact, the total mobility months at Okayama University is very important, uh, higher than 150. We have a strong and prestigious uh, partnership, including University of Torino as coordinator. In terms of research, the program has permitted to unveil a new chamber in the mound, uh, in a mound uh, studied in uh, Okayama. And it has also been, uh, it has also permitted to develop database, a virtual reality system, and AI and artificial intelligence. In terms of virtual reality for archaeology, Professor Vincenzo Lombardo from Torino has developed a world premiere at Tokayama University, a system allowing the viewer to travel in geospace and time to the archaeological site and the related findings. BRKO has also given strong outcomes in terms of science, for instance, 
high tech use for improving understanding of a Kofun structure. And here you have a few, a few features of the new discovery of a new stone chamber in the Kofun. And last but not least, the tale of BRKO between science and tradition with special exhibitions, one in Shimane Prefecture in Japan. This uh, exhibition started a few days ago and will last until the uh, beginning of uh, December. This is a nice uh, exhibition in a very prestigious museum in this uh, uh, area in, of uh, Shimane. And another exhibition is planned in Turin, in Italy, in early 2023 at the Museum of Oriental Arts. So let's go now to a second success story, CMB Inflate, exploring very early stages of the universe, prior Big Bang. Yeah, the CMB Inflate is focused on advances in correcting systemic errors of uh, uh, CMB signal, long-term impact of the correcting methodologies and connection with Lightbird Project's Japanese satellite launched in 2027. You can see here that the uh, partnership is very prestigious, including Berkeley Lab, Okayama University, and, and University of Tokyo, for instance, for these, uh, for, the, for Okayama. Uh, it's a very, very good uh, partnership. The networking activities are over 16 partners around the world, and it brings more than 50 mobility months, mobility months to Okayama University. The budget is a bit higher than 1 million. And the last third one, last project running at Okayama University is Hespring, focused on higher education public policies to empower uh, springboard in the university. It has been very highly rated, exceptional funding for TC mobilities. There are two partners, two, two Japanese partners in the consortium. The budget is a bit more than 1 million euro. It, the project is um, intended to bring to the international community new mindset for higher education public policies. And the mobility is, again, is extremely large for Okayama University, 60 months over four years. Just to finish with my talk, uh, this, uh, this uh, series of uh, international project staff exchange are connected with a, a, a strong effort in training international students at Okayama University. This is an integration uh, research and uh, higher education in a holistic approach. The impact of, uh, of the staff exchange is very good for the global image of Okayama University and allowed to view more, than, more top level European students to the university. Just to mention that from 2016, nearly 200 students from France and European countries, 2013, 2022, have been uh, welcomed at Okayama University for three to six months, a very professional internship. As a matter of conclusion, strategies for improving Okayama University globalization, it's a long-standing daily battle it relies on holistic approach where research is central. Okayama University has quite a number of top level research teams. And the second uh, pillar of these strategies is, is research. Large scale international prestigious consortium can be built. And this is why we have a range of large scale EU Horizon Europe project now running at Okayama University. And the third one is higher education. Higher education integrated with research for global approach. MSC staff exchange, it's a springboard for globalization in Japan. And the message I want to send to the community now today is first, MSC staff exchange fits very well Japanese university needs for improved globalization because it's very simple logistic to get on board. It provides lots of mobility months from Europe to Japan supported by the EU commission. It's very flexible and open to nearly any type of institution or any type of uh, research field. MSTA staff exchange give rise to groundbreaking science and prestigious outcomes. And this prestige 
allow us to increase the number of master PhD student postdoc at the university. This is another request from Next for more globalization. And finally, MSC staff exchange model developed at Okayama University can be transferred to any other Japanese university, of course, provided that professional skills in research project engineering are available. And that's it. Arigato gozaimasu. Yes, thank you, Professor Chenevier, um, to actually make this uh, video available to our attendees. And I would like to open the floor to questions. So those of you who would like to ask uh, Barlena any questions right now in real time, or you would like to submit your questions uh, to Professor Chenevier, um, to whom we will relay your uh, queries via email, and he will be able to answer at a later date. Uh, please type your questions in the Q&A box, or alternatively, you can also send us a message in the chat. Uh, so let's see if you have uh, any questions. While you are typing your questions, um, I would like to ask uh, Marlena if um, she sees any sort of advantage for Japanese organizations to apply for uh, MSC staff exchanges um, uh, with Europe. And if uh, there is any specific advice that you would like to um, give to organizations or researchers or research um, associates who organize these staff exchanges? Um, yes, I mean, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be here promoting the, the scheme if I didn't see advantages. No, I think, and actually the presentation right now by Professor uh, Chenevier summarized it uh, quite well. MSCA staff exchanges is easy, uh, let's say. It's the easiest of the MSCA and maybe even Horizon Europe. So it's a first step into the program. Uh, it's the most flexible action. Uh, action. Um, you know, we're really trying to have projects that think outside the box, that mix different disciplines. So, so I mean, it, it's, you know, in terms of innovation, I think it's a great opportunity. So it's, it's quite easy to participate, especially for Japanese organizations, because as you are associated partners, you don't have to sign the grant agreement. So even all the administrative burden, uh, let's say, is not with you, is with the, the project uh, beneficiaries. So, yeah, I would say, I mean, it's easy. You receive fully funded European top-notch researchers huh, and stuff. So Europeans come to you, to Japan, to, you know, work on R&I uh, activities, fully funded by the project. So you don't have to pay anything uh, to receive, I mean, these researchers or, I mean, he said students, we speak of PhD candidates. So early stage researchers who can come for a few months, up to one year, fully covered by by the EU. I think it's, it's a great opportunity to develop your uh, international strategies or to apply your international strategy. I think, uh, you know, Japan, I mean, at least the ministry is big, is putting a big focus on this in recent years, uh, trying to make universities more international. So staff exchanges is one way um, to do this. So I would say there's only advantages um, in, in participating. Now, obviously, the downside is more that if you want to send your own stuff, as I said, you would you would have to yourself cover um, their costs. But here again, uh, the ministry in Japan is, is trying to to yeah compensate some of this. Um, so for, I see there's one question in the chat. Yeah. It's a pity that, I mean, maybe this can be then relayed to Professor Chenevier. Um, so Okayama University actually, as you saw, participates in several uh, staff exchange projects. And I know that for the last one, uh, the one that was just selected uh, in 2021, they actually managed to get exceptional uh, funding. So that's why actually when we speak of Japan, we don't say it's not eligible for funding. We say it's not automatically eligible for funding. So if in the application form you can justify that you absolutely need this Japanese partner, 
for X, Y, Z reason. Huh? So there has to be a clear added value why this partner has to be there and not anybody else. It could be that you can even receive funding for that partner. It's quite rare, huh? so don't get your hopes up. But I know that Okayama managed um, to do this in the last uh, uh, call. So maybe Professor Chenevier, can you tell, tell you more about this? Obviously, it's at the discretion of the evaluator. Um, so when your project is received in Brussels, we hire experts to go through the application and they will say if yes or no, uh, they agree, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that the partner should be in. But otherwise, um, I know that Okayama uh, will apply for the GSPS funding. Uh, so the, the funding available uh, by the Japanese government uh, next year. So they will next year apply for staff exchanges and in parallel also ask for money from the Japanese uh, government. But otherwise, more generally, I would say that the funds, uh, you know, to cover your stuff going, obviously you have the salary, so you continue to, co to, to, to cover the salary, but then often the, your own institution would bring in uh, funds, maybe also the private sector. It depends also the content of, of, of your project and the composition, um, obviously. I don't know, you did, obviously you can also always uh, come in and correct or compliment uh, anything that I say based on your uh, experience at, at Euraxis Japan. Yes, indeed. Uh, at the same time, I'm afraid we are not involved in the day-to-day -day application process and we are not at liberty to actually uh, supervise applications. So as you said, that's um, uh, at the discretion of the evaluator. And uh, also, I'm afraid we do not have open access to uh, collaboration documents between universities and institutes. At the same time, we are happy to help with uh, finding um, finding contacts, finding partner institutes, institutions. And uh, those of you who are thinking about uh, applying for this MSC staff exchange uh, will happily um, engage in uh, communication with you. So please feel free to reach out to us. And uh, at this point, I would like to ask if there are any further questions from the audience. Maybe I can just add because you mentioned uh, partners. So um, I mean, I know it can be a little bit intimidating to apply to an action if you don't already have established uh, networks. Obviously, I mean, your first step should be talk to the people you already cooperate with, uh, uh, so that to, to set up. A consortium and apply but if you do not have that network yet we do have a partner search tool on the the funding and tenders portal so also don't hesitate to have a look there you could be surprised maybe you know you you will easily find somebody that wants to you know set up something very similar to what you had in mind um so you know don't be scared off because you think you don't have the partners necessary to to apply for this that's why i'm saying also staff exchange is a the most easy and flexible action to start with. And then once you have this network, you could even think of participating in other MSCA actions like doctoral uh, networks, for instance. Yes, indeed. Indeed, thank you very much. Any further questions? No, we don't see any questions at this point. So thank you very much for um, the talk, Marlena. And uh, I would also like to thank Professor Chenevier and um, the audience for actually tuning in to our webinar today. The recording will be made available on our YouTube uh, channel and um, the presentations uh, uploaded on our portal. Please follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, also Line and Facebook. And if you have any further questions, yes, there are. Um, does it mean we need to contact partners and they will submit the application? We don't have to submit anything by ourselves. Uh, Marlena, if you could please. Uh, yes, so this. you have to, to contact uh, exactly. So as I said, the minimum composition is that you need to have three uh, organizations involved, two of which in uh, uh, Europe if uh, to, to submit the application. So the beneficiaries are those located in the EU member state or as I said, Horizon Europe associated countries. So 
that 16 additional countries, 27 plus 16, I think. So they will be the ones responsible for submitting the application. Now, this does not mean that you will not be involved uh, in the application, because obviously, if you want to have a strong application, you have to really agree on the role of the different uh, uh, partners. Uh, you will have to give all the information about your institution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but this application will be submitted by the beneficiaries located uh, in uh, Europe, uh, to, to put it more easily. So yes, you have to find partners in Europe and they will submit the application based on the information you give them. Yes, thank you so much. Any further questions? Let us wait another few seconds before I, I start uh, saying goodbye to the audience. We we'll still have approximately five minutes, so there is time for um, two short questions and one longer question. <laughs> uh, I mean, just maybe to because it's true that it can be confusing who submits the application or not. Also, because from MSCA action to MSCA action, it's a little bit different here for instance stuff exchanges so it's it's a europeans that will submit the application now if you were doing for example you are a phd can, candidate already and you want to do a postdoc uh, so that would be the action called postdoctoral fellowships then you would you together with your host would apply together so there you would be asked even if you're a japanese uh, researcher or Indian or uh, American, uh, etc. You would have to, together with your host in Europe, submit the application. Um, so it depends a little bit which MSCA action you are applying for. It could be that uh, you are also asked to to uh, submit. Uh, so can a Japanese prospect uh, PhD student apply for MSCA doctoral network position, uh, even if there are no Japanese partners in the MSCA project? Yes, uh, yes, you can. Uh, so uh, nationality doesn't play a role. Uh, you can apply for doctoral networks or, as I just said, postdoctoral fellowships with an organization in Europe it doesn't have to be an organization in uh, in uh, Japan. Um, so yeah, that's totally possible and encouraged um, as well. Yes, thank you for uh, the third question. Indeed, any further questions? We still have time for one more question. Uh, three minutes left on the clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I do not see any questions. Uh, that means, again, thank you for uh, attending our webinar today. Um, thank you, Marlena, for agreeing to speak. And follow us on our SNS and the portal. We are looking forward to seeing you in our upcoming webinars. Thank you for your time. And uh, we hope to have been useful to you and your research prospects. Thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs>